I want you to close your eyes and envision what your perfect LED light would look like. Okay, now open them. If I had to guess, I'd bet that it looks something like the new Amaran 150C, a continuous LED light from Aperture that, at the risk of sounding a little bit alarmist, might have just changed the game. Let me explain. So Aperture has just released the new 150C, part of their more budget-friendly Amaran lineup. A quick disclaimer, Aperture did send me this light to test out, but they have no say in what I say, no money changed hands, and they don't get to see this video before you do. Now, what's the deal with this light and what makes it so special? Well, the 150C is a Cobb continuous light with a Bowens mount and 150 watts of output, meaning you can mount just about any of your most common modifiers to shape and diffuse the light as you see fit. It's quite bright, especially if you're in a smaller space, but if you do need more power, they also just released the 300C, which is double the output for 200 additional dollars, but more on the price in just a minute. It comes with a nice padded carrying case, the AC connection, and a reflector. There are also a number of improvements that Aperture has made to this light that make it kind of stand out as one of a kind, so let's get into those. Now, Aperture has long been known for having very color accurate lights, and this one is no different with both a CRI and TCLI of over 95. It also boasts a tungsten SSI of 83 and a daylight SSI of 71. And I know I just threw out a whole bunch of jargony numbers, but before your eyes completely glaze over and you click away to watch the latest Nelk video, no. just know that this means that the light is very color accurate. So you're not gonna be getting any of that gross green color casting in your image. Plus on the topic of color, there is one very secret, not so secret bonus feature that we'll get to in just a second. The Amaran 150C also has a vastly improved yoke mounting point. Some of the other Amaran lights do have a twist to adjust mounting system and sometimes that's separate from the light itself. And I've always been a much bigger fan of the yoke system because it's much easier to effectively adjust your light angle. Now let's talk about the carrying case. Aperture has really stepped up their game here. The case has a snug foam interior that holds all the components securely, but also giving you the room to easily fit them back in the case. For instance, it doesn't matter what position you have that aforementioned yoke pointing, it's still going to fit and you're gonna be able to close the case. You see, one area where these sort of more budget-friendly lights skimp out on the cost is the case. Some only give you a cardboard box, some give you a foam case like this, but there's issues with it. Some of the previous Amaran lights, such as the 60X and 60D, have a foam case as well, but it's almost impossible to get the light back into the case and close it. It's kind of like trying to unpop a balloon. It's never gonna happen, and it'll leave you feeling deflated. <laughs> That was bad. Another area that some budget-friendly lights tend to cut corners on is on the cooling. While the fan doesn't have any controls that can be adjusted, it is nice and quiet and it has a large heat sink throughout. It seems to kind of kick on as needed, but I've never actually noticed it making any disturbing sound that can be picked up on camera. In fact, things like my Atomos Ninja recorder, that actually makes more sound than this light does. The included reflector on the Amaran 150C is also much improved. Some of the previous Amaran lights had this kind of unpleasing hot spot in the center, but this has been remedied on the Amaran 150C, making the reflector actually much more useful. Now, all of these things that I've listed are obviously nice things, but nothing that screams, whip out the credit card and buy this thing right now. Bye, bye, bye. Now, the absolute best thing about this light is that it's not just a bicolor light, nor is it just an RGB light, it's a full RGB WW light. This gives you full latitude to adjust the hue, saturation, luminance of the light and gives you all kind of accents to have the nice colorful lighting of your scene, such as this blue behind me here. And not only does it give you that HSI functionality, which is great, but you also have CCT mode, which gives you a huge range from 2,500 to 7,500 Kelvin on the light, which is actually wider than the typical bicolor light, which is usually around 2,700 to 6,500 Kelvin. Another huge selling point is that it also gives you access to green magenta shift when in CCT mode. This allows you to adjust the green and magenta of the light by plus or minus one with 10% increments in between. This allows you to not only compensate because lights do tend to shift in their tint over time as time goes on, but it also allows you to match other lighting that you may have as well that might have a tint. This definitely makes the Amaran 150C stand apart from the competition by a lot. There are many great bicolor lights out there, but if you want to have that green magenta shift functionality, you'd have to go with something like the Aperture 600C Pro, which runs around $2,500, 
or the Nanlite Forza 300B Mark II at $1,000, a great key light that I've been using for a while. There are also many good RGB lights out there, but they usually lack the power required to also be sufficient as a key light. It's kind of like you're getting two for the price of one, but in this instance, the price is less than half of one because the price is only $359. One downside of this light fixture is the lack of controls. On many lights, you'd have a control box with multiple buttons and a screen to adjust the available settings. On the Amaran lineup, they ditch that control box and instead just give you the, curl, the control settings directly on the back of the light. There are some downsides to this based on where you have the light mounted, especially if it's really high up. Now, don't get me wrong. The dials on the back are really smooth and functional despite being plastic, and the menu system is quite easy and intuitive to use, despite being pretty limited. However, this being an aperture light, that does mean that you get access to the Citus Link app, which is far and away the best of the apps from any of the lighting companies. This gives you access to a huge range of new functionality. For example, I previously mentioned that you could adjust the CCT range from 2500 to 7500 Kelvin, but I'm a sneaky little snake and I lied. I'm a sweathery little snake and snake. With control with the app, you can actually adjust it from a ridiculous 1500 to 20,000 Kelvin. You can also adjust the color, set effects like firework or paparazzi, and you can even do this little cool little color picker thing with your phone camera that allows you to match the color of anything that you can see around you. It's kind of like having an infinity gauntlet for the lighting world, harnessing the power of color right in your fingertips. I am inevitable. Or something like that. One other thing that might seem minor that I do love about this light in combination with the Citus Link is that you can actually fully turn off the light with the app, which sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how most high-end lights that use app functionality can't actually turn all the way off with their respective apps, and they rather just dim all the way down to zero, which actually leaves them consuming power and or leaves the fan on. While the Citus Link and all of these other features are great, I do have one main gripe with this 150C, and that is the power cable. Now look, they say size shouldn't matter in the bedroom, but even here in my little bedroom office, this thing ain't long enough to get me excited. The section that connects the power brick to the wall is only about three feet long, meaning you're either going to need an extension cord or you have to have that power brick sitting on the ground about 90% of the time. Now, maybe this isn't a huge deal for some, and I don't think it's necessarily a deal breaker, but typically you'd want to have the power brick hanging on the C-sand, and it even has a loop that is designed for it to do so. And I'd like to have more length to kind of move the right light around for more mobility. And sort of speaking of mobility, there's actually no power option for portable power either, AKA no V-mount battery option. Again, given the price point, this is totally to be expected and isn't something that anything else in this sort of price point has, but these power shortcomings definitely are a little bit of a deal breaker for that more professional crowd that might be on set or something like that. So. Who should actually buy this light? Well, I think that this light perfectly fits in for just about any content creator. No, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm a content creator. Thinking at that 359 price point, it is hard to find anything that has the same level of quality and functionality. There is something like the Forza 60C if you want something that's RGB, but that's only a 60 watt light and while I do love it, it's mostly useful as accent lighting and adding a pop of color rather than a key light. Not to mention that that Forza 60C is double the price at 750, or $700 rather. With the Amaran 150C on the other hand, you not only get those color accents, but you also get a high quality key light as well. Aperture has also just released the 300C as I mentioned, which is essentially the same in every way, except 300 watts of output housed in actually the exact same body for that additional $200 more, so 569. If you have a small bedroom studio like this, having 300 watts of power is probably overkill. I do use a 300 watt for my main key light, which is what's lighting me right here, but that's at 15%. So having, I would say having 150 watts is probably good if you're doing something like YouTube, for example. But if you're working on sort of larger sets and you need that extra firepower, then you truly do need that all-in-one light. Just go for the 300C and make sure you have an extension cord. So I'm curious, what do you think? Is this something that you would be interested? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to play thumb with the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.